Educational Resources, or OER, are part of a global movement to increase access to educational materials to students, instructors, and professionals. OER are learning materials that are freely available for use, redistribution, and adaptation. The College of Health Sciences at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, also known as KNUST, is located in Kumasi, Ghana. In 2008, KNUST entered into a collaboration with four other universities, OER Africa and the Hewlett and Gates Foundations to adopt and to promote this educational paradigm. This video depicts the values and motivations that led to this decision and the expectations of the early adopters regarding its impact on health education at KNUST. The, the um, OER program at USD is unique uh, because it's first and foremost a new paradigm in teaching and training which allows uh, different variations uh, and access and combinations by both users and producers in, in, in bringing to bear uh, resources for the purposes of uh, learning without restriction to a course structure. If it's possible to be part of this movement, why not? I mean, um, we, we struggle to have access to information. If we have information, why don't we also share it and therefore uh, become part of a pool of universities who are prepared to, to exchange information uh, for the purpose of improved learning, I think. And that's, uh, that's how we, that's how, why I thought KUST initially, I, mean, I got interested in making definitely the, the College of Health Sciences take a serious interest in OER. It's, it's, it's an asset, it's going to be something that will help the, the, the department to grow. At the same time, to it will also help the students to look at other areas apart from what traditionally uh, they are associated with. Yeah. I think this heralds um, higher heights that we have to reach in teaching and training. We were first exposed to open educational resources during the pivotal visit of President Mary Sue Coleman of the University of Michigan. And we had an exposition by uh, Professor Kari Engelberg uh, from Michigan. And indeed, the, 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 the sophistication uh, that was portrayed led me to say to myself that this was well nigh impossible in, in our part of the world. However, 10 months later, I have a different story to tell that this is very possible. We, we, we are not doing OER for the benefit of, of people outside KUST primarily even though we see that as a secondary benefit. We are using OER because uh, it will make our lives easier in many, many ways. Uh, having my lecture material readily available to students 24 hours a day, seven days a week, means that they can even read it before they come to meet me in the lecture room. And therefore, they will probably who ask the right questions if they've, they, they've read it. After the lecture, if there's something they do not understand, I, I expect that they'll be able to refer back to my material and, and go over it again. You see, every uh, four or five years, we have a review of the curricula in the department. And so this year, yes, we had planned at the beginning of the year that we we're going to have the uh, a retreat and discuss a uh, review the program and then OER came in and so the timing was just appropriate for us to be able to look at uh, expanding it, uh, reviewing it and also at the same time satisfying the demands of the OER uh, program. OER is unique um, 
in that it's a new paradigm in, in education and training. And we here in KNUST think that this new paradigm and the techniques involved will allow us to give opportunity to both the trainer and trainee to go through as many rehearsals as they wish um, uh, in an attempt to do the picture perfect acquisition of knowledge. A bit like what they do in Hollywood. The nice movie we see is after 1,000 or so rehearsals and it looks picture perfect. And we think that learning should be that way. We should be able to rehearse over and over again what we learn. It only adds up to our being perfect in, in what we learn. Uh, I think there are some um, uh, disciplines in which uh, the electronic media are particularly suited, and health sciences is one of those. Uh, a lot of the uh, material that has to be learned uh, requires uh, a visual interface and, and can be taught and learned much more easily uh, with pictures or uh, with moving pictures uh, or with sound um, better than it could be in a classroom or on the printed page. A lot of, the, a lot of what is learned in um, the health sciences involves understanding processes and sometimes these processes are not visible, either because they're taking place inside the body or they're taking place at a microscopic level. And uh, the, the ability to visualize these things, even things that are not visual, uh, and to make them, uh, to conceptualize them better using electronic resources, it really represents an advancement in teaching and learning. This would more or less um, bring a revolution to the way we learn because we are so used to you know, directly interacting with our teachers. First of all, it would be convenient to the lecturer because he has to give the same lessons over and over again. So if it's put in the form of an OER, then it can be made accessible to the students. By going through the videos, what I realized was that, I don't know if it's by design, but they've been designed in such a way that they are not replacing the main student-teacher interactions we are supposed to have. They are such that if you're a serious student, you go for lectures, you go for your labs, and you add them, they are the perfect helping aid. But they're also designed such that you can't be lazy and use them to replace the class sessions. It won't work. They are meant to go hand in hand. Uh, we are not pretending that this is a substitute for the, the real thing, not at all. But, you know, we believe that just having that opportunity to review what was not seen well during the, the teaching period, either on the clinic, on the ward, or in the laboratory, means that when the opportunity arises, they'll be able to do it well, or better. You get to go over the same lectures as often as you want to. And with the ones that I've gone through, the advantage I see is that our lecturers were used. So these are professors and doctors we are familiar with. So you're listening to it in the bedroom and it feels like you're having a one-on-one -on -one interaction. Because what happens here is that we have about 140 students in the class and the student to teacher ratio is so large. So in class, you don't get to get that maximum exposure to the lecturer. And so OER uh, just ensures that those who are not able to listen to you, even to get seats in the lecture hall, will still have access to your, your teaching material. Um, in third year, for example, we have um, these um, lab labs we, we do, and normally they give us um, laboratory books, so that if we have um, clinical videos on gram staining, for example, and the lab would gives us the theory on it, then you read, you watch the video before you go to the lab so you don't feel lost and you can, you know, review it over and over and it sticks. So I think it's really going to be helpful. Teaching and training will be impacted dramatically by OER because as it is now, we have to coordinate between the presence of the trainer and the trainee and 
the case or patient that you require. And many times we don't have control over patient disposition and sometimes the disposition of the trainer because the trainer would be giving service um, in addition to training. And so it is very difficult to get the three components that we require in the health sciences training every time. And therefore, in the end, necessarily, the student trainee exposure to the learning scheme or the learning material is truncated to, to fit um, the, the, the schedules of uh, the trainee, the trainer, and the patient. However, OER overcomes this. Uh, you know, certain demonstrations which we have to perform to students uh, often are carried to large groups of students. Let's say we go to the clinic uh, and uh, we have about 20 students hovering over the lecturer trying to get a feel of a lump, trying to learn how to examine a lump properly. Uh, with through the means of OER, we should be able to, uh, we are able to actually uh, show them closer how it's done. They can then go back and practice on their own. It's best experienced at Confanoche, for example, and there are 140 students in my class, and we are divided into teams of 14. So for fourth year, for example, in medicine, we have 14 first year, um, fourth year students. And then the final year is also divided into teams. So for the same, let's say, team A, you have 14 students from fourth year, 14 students from final year who are both doing medicine, junior and senior clerkship. That makes 18 students, um, sorry, 28 students. And you have one consultant, a few residents, house officers. So in a team, you are looking at not less than about 35 people. And in the morning, we are all going for ward rounds. Not to mention the hospital is not that big, so the spaces in between beds are small. So sometimes it gets so ridiculous that there are more doctors than patients in the ward. You have about five patients in the ward and 30 doctors coming for ward rounds. You don't hear much. You don't see much. And then in the theaters, for example, we are having total abdominal hysterectomy, about 14, 20 of us there. Once again, you don't hear much, you don't see much. The lecturers do their best, but they can only shout so much. They can only project so much. There are no microphones. So it's terrible. So in that sense, with the OER video, for example, on um, total abdominal hysterectomy and the caesarean section, you watch it, you go to the theater, even though you are so many, there isn't much to hear, there isn't much to see. But once you've seen it before, you know what's going to be done. So that if you hear this word and you don't hear the next sentence, at least you know what is being done. So you appreciate it more. So I think it's really going to help. Because during orals, you are asked to describe um, maybe caesarean session. And we are found fumbling. Not because we haven't seen it before, but because there are so many of us, you don't really hear, even though our lecturers do their best. So with the OER, it gives us you know, direct access. You are seeing things so clearly, as you probably would not see in the theater. So that when you see the actual thing, it's only going to augment what you've already seen um, on the video. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I can see a clear case. We, in, for instance, in the Department of Surgery, uh, a course is run for doctors in the district hospitals uh, who need to come over for a week or sometimes two weeks, work with surgeons, be taught various skills like hernia repair, and then they have to go back. Uh, during that week, we show them many, many surgical procedures. Now, if we could even produce this material as OER, then if they, are, they were not able to get the opportunity to practice the skills soon after they got back, they would have the reference material there. They will be able to look at the videos and the recordings again when the need arises uh, as a way of refreshing one's memory on the things that you already know. So yeah, it's got an excellent uh, opportunity to be useful there.
the present resources that we have, coupled with enthusiasm for producing educational materials, will lead to the production of OER material. Indeed, software and some equipment help to make this uh, sophisticated, um, but it is not an impossibility. And I, I would encourage, and I feel encouraged myself, that um, the sophistication did not put me off, uh, and, and it should not put anyone off. I think that uh, among the faculty members, there'll be some who will become hobbyists in producing electronic learning material that will turn into OER. But most of them will be uh, very satisfied to uh, hook up with uh, another resource that is a media specialist from the university who can help them take the material that they already have or that they wish to produce and put it into a format that will make it acceptable in the, in the e-learning uh, uh, universe. So um, I think what the faculty members need to learn is what is possible and, and also to have a sense of what's required to take, uh, take material and turn it into an interactive program or a video program or whatever the desired uh, output is. Communication design, as we have over here, uh, is more often than not misunderstood. Um, people tend to relegate it to uh, this painting and drawing. Uh, yeah, but uh, apart from being a creative activity, uh, it's also a stimulating uh, intellectual and technical uh, activity uh, where we produce uh, multimedia content to satisfy uh, various demands. Um, with the OER program, um, we, we, we see that we are going to play a pivotal role in uh, training faculty, uh, staff, and students, uh, for all those who are engaged in OER. And so we, we've had to make some adjustments to satisfy the needs of the OER program. But, um, as much as we teach uh, the interactive tools, uh, there was a need for us to also look at interface design. And so uh, we decided to expand uh, the course to include um, uh, that particular component. And so as from next semester, we are going to have it as uh, interface and interaction design. Multimedia management looks like, uh, like at a broad uh, session of issues that affects the manager who works in a multimedia uh, setting. Uh, there's one particular component which deals with copyright issues. And uh, that is where uh, we've also had to make some uh, adjustments, to expand it to include the issue of Creative Commons and so on. Well, the discovery of Adam Rahman at uh, CanUST was a real breakthrough for uh, this Open Educational Resources project because uh, he and his students have exactly the types of skills that would complement uh, the medical faculty, the nursing faculty, the pharmacy faculty in producing the kinds of materials that they would really like to be able to produce. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Rahman and I organized a little experiment with one of his classes to see whether they could take some uh, video and animation material that had already been prepared to demonstrate how a gram stain is performed. And then we gave them that material and asked them to produce uh, something of their own uh, using their own artistic and design talents to see what they would come up with. And so what we did was uh, later on, uh, Dr. Uh, Carey came over and uh, gave a chalkboard you know, uh, talk with uh, their class. And then from there, we had to break them into groups you know, to work at developing different concepts or approaches to uh, uh, representing the materials uh, given to us. These are excerpts from the dozen or so versions of the Graham Stain tutorial that students designed to fulfill the assignment. This experiment demonstrated that a partnership between health professionals and communication design students and faculty can lead to materials that reflect advanced science topics in a well-designed educational interface. I think the benefits 
mainly in two areas. Uh, the first one is that we open ourselves up to the rest of the world about the content of material that we are putting out there to our students uh, and and that the rest of the world can judge whether we are teaching the right thing or the wrong thing. Uh, in other words, we are exposing ourselves to criticism, uh, which I think is positive, even though some people may not always be very comfortable with it. But ultimately, provided we get some positive feedback, then that is likely to be beneficial to us in the long term. Uh, so that is the first point. The second point is that by putting out our material uh, freely available to whoever wants to use it, we are making ourselves very visible. Uh, we are sharing what we have and we are advertising ourselves at the same time. I part particularly enjoy the clinical videos and the animations. With the PDF versions, well, we can always get the theory parts in books, but then with the clinical videos, it, you know, it brings on the um, added human touch where you feel like you're actu actually interacting with somebody else. And then also with the animations, it makes things so simple. Because I was going through the um, polymerized chain reaction. Instead, I found it so difficult to conceptualize it. But then it was made so simplified in the animation, it was so easy to grasp it. So I like, and then I love the self-assessment parts. Because sometimes when you're going through it, it's like you're playing. But at the end of the day, there are these questions you have to answer. And it brings you home that maybe you're just watching the videos, you're not getting the actual information. So I believe those three, the clinical videos, the animation, and the self-assessment quiz, very important, yeah. Uh, I think we're in a new realm. Uh, 